Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about frames and machines. Frames and machines are structures composed of pin-connected multi-force members. Trusses were also pin-connected, but they were only two-force members. So that's the major distinction. We have multi-force members. Frames support load, machine contain moving parts designed to alter and transmit loads. Here I'm showing you an example of a backhoe. So you can see the main arm is connected by multiple pins uh, with different uh, members. So the, there are multiple locations that we have forces. So if I draw the free body diagram here for the two major parts, you can see all the forces that are being applied on the two uh, members. This type of free body diagram that we draw multiple members uh, together, we call them exploded free body diagram. In exploded free body diagram, there are some shared regions. You can think of it as point D here. We have DX and DY. And then for the other part, the directions are the opposite. If this one is to the left, here is to the right. If this one is going downward, this one is going upward. Because there are action and reaction. When we add these two free body diagram together, these internal forces will go away. Because there are having the opposite direction. Because frames are multi-force members, it doesn't mean they don't have any two-force member components. So there are members that are only two-force members. And it's very important to identify those members because that would simplify our equations. If we have a two-force member, that means that that member is either in tension or compression. So if this is point A, we call it FA here, and this is point B, we call it FB. If it's a two force member, FA equals FB. And they could be either in tension or compression. But if it's not a two force member, then at B, we have BX and BY. We don't know the magnitude or direction, but we know it's gonna have a component in X and a component in Y. And let's say we have a force here. So you can see instead of having only one unknown, we have four unknowns now, two at B and two at A. So if we identify that the member is a two force member, that will simplify our equation significantly. But what are the conditions of a two force member? A two force member is that we have forces only at two point. It doesn't mean we need to have two forces, but forces only at two points. We can have multiple forces being applied, but as long as they are only applied at two points, our member is gonna be a two force member. So if it's a two force member, then what reaction forces do we have? We have two forces that are equal in magnitude, they are in the opposite direction, and most importantly, they have the same line of action, or they are collinear. So if our member is here, I have a force in this direction. The other force has to be equal, opposite direction, and on the same line of action. So that means that for a linear member, my member would be either in tension or compression. But we could have a nonlinear member. Let's say we have a member like this. And we have point A and point B. In that scenario, they have to be collinear, they have to be the opposite direction. If I draw my, my forces, one going up, one going down, that is true that it satisfies our equilibrium equation, summation of forces in x equals zero, summation of forces in y equals zero, but it doesn't satisfy the moment equation because if I take a moment about point A, that moment will not be zero. And we know our member has to be in equilibrium. If our frame is in equilibrium, every member of that frame would be in equilibrium. So that means that to satisfy the moment equation, our forces should be collinear. And that's where the first condition comes from. If the forces would be collinear on the same line of action, now we have, we satisfy all the condition, summation of forces in X, summation of forces in Y, and summation of moment would be zero. 
And if we call this FA and call this FB, we'll find out that FA is equals FB. So we only have one unknown for that member. So for to analyze frames, our first task is to identify the two force members because that simplifies our equation. Then draw a free by diagram. So here in frame, we draw multiple free by diagram or as I called it, we draw exploded free by diagram. And depending on what unknown uh, do we want to find, then we might draw the entire frame free by diagram, a portion of a frame or each of its member. If we draw the free by diagram of all the members, then we call that an exploded free body uh, diagram. The reason that we draw multiple free by diagram because each free by diagram is going to give us the equilibrium equation. Summation of forces in X, Y, and moment. So if we draw two free by diagram, we get six equations and we can solve for six unknowns. So let's look at some examples here. Here we are gonna find the two force members and draw the free by diagram for each case. So here remember BC is a two force member because we have pins at two points and then we are neglecting the weight. So we have forces only applied at two points. And if I wanna draw the free by diagram, remember BC, could be either intention or compression, but I just write in form of compression. I call both of them FB because they are the same. I don't need to call one of them FB and one of them FC. Then the reaction of that would be the opposite. So here is FB, the opposite direction. At A, member ABD is not a two force member. So at A, I have two components, AX and AY. That I'm gonna assume positive here. Then I have uh, here, forces that pin uh, D. But let's draw the free body diagram of the pulley here. We have tension, we have tension here, then we have DX and DY, then the opposite of that would be in this direction, DX and DY. So this is an exploded free body diagram. If I add these members together, then the internal forces will cancel. Then I will have only external forces. These are the internal forces that appeared when I exposed each member. Let's look at another example. Here we have two members that are two force members, member BC as well as member AB. So if I draw the free body diagram for each case, I'm gonna draw AB I'm gonna call it FA, both of them FA, rather than calling it FA and FB because the two forces are the same. So the same thing for the other member, I have FB here, FB here, and I can draw the free body diagram of my pulley as well, opposite FA and opposite of FB in this direction. I have three members. If I add them together, the internal forces will go away. Let's look at another example here. Here we have one uh, two force member, member AB. So I'm gonna draw free by diagram. I'm gonna call this FA, FA. The other member BC is not a two force member. So for at C, I have both components, CX and CY. I have the two loads applied. And at B, I have this FA in the opposite direction. If I add them together, the internal forces will go away. Let's look at another example here. Here, our member is not, uh, we have one member that is not linear, but the procedure is the same. We have one two force member, member AB, so I'm gonna draw the free body diagram and I'm gonna draw exploded free body diagram to show the action and reaction forces. At C, we have a reaction. I don't know the direction, but I know it's gonna have a component in X and a component in Y. I have my moment. And at B, because it's a two force member, so I know I have a reaction here, FB. And that would be my member. FB and FB. Uh, 
uh, one condition to always pay attention to if you put back the two members the the internal forces should go away otherwise your members are not going to be in equilibrium so always check that when you are adding the two members together so let's look at this example now we have distributed loading that means that we have a resultant force here and a resultant force here is 400 newton per meter is 1.5 so each resultant force would be 600 Newton. Uh, I don't have any two force members. So I have two members here and another member here. Sorry, my drawing is not perfect. CX, CY. I have AX, AY. Reaction forces. I have a resultant force here, 600 Newton. I have a resultant force here, 600 Newton. I have a force being applied here, 600 Newton. And at the point of contact, which is here, I think it's called B, I have BX and BY. And here is pin, so it would be the opposite direction, BX and BY. If I, if I add the two forces, two members together, you can see the external forces will go away. And let's look at this example. Here we have one two force member, DC. If we identify that, that simplifies. Then we don't have to write CX, CY, DX, DY. So if I don't identify that I, that's a two force member, I have to write DX, DY, CX, CY. But now if I identify it's a two force member, I go from four unknowns to only one unknown. Here I can either call it FC or FD. So here I have four unknowns. But here because I identify this, I have one unknown. If you don't identify it, and if you can solve it, if you have enough equation to solve for the unknowns, that's fine, you will get the same answer. But let's draw our free body diagram. We have a point A is a fixed, so I have all the reactions. I have AX, I have AY, and I have my moment because it's a fixed point. So I have a resultant force here that you can find the magnitude. At C, I have FC, and I have the member here, and then if I want to draw the, the other one here, at B, I have BX and BY is pinned, so it doesn't have any moment. I have my resultant force. And I have FC. So if I add all of them together, and this one should go between the two, this I should bring it between the two, then you will see that the internal forces will go away. And that's it for frames and machining.